Coach, I'm just wondering for you personally, what was it like not being on the sideline for those three games? And also, what have you gotten to watch the run game uh, against Calvary in the games this season? Yeah, I mean, you know, it was difficult just because you want to be a part of it and be as assistant, help as much as in any aspect that you can. Um, you know, so I, I would say difficult in that aspect, especially when things are not going the way you planned. And, you know, I've been on that sideline when things were going good. I've been on that sideline when things wasn't going very good. And, um, you always want support under those kind of struggling times. And um, I just thought the backs did a good job of seeing it, you know, getting, you know, getting those extra yards. We talked about yards of the contact if you want to be great. Um, we got to do a better job of maintaining and sustaining blocks. And also just coordinating the run. We got to make sure we put them in the best position as we can because, you know, we do get, you know, even though we want to run the ball, we want to establish the run, so we got to make sure the looks are matching up to what you want to be. I'm sure I have Darius back health, and then Jalen, Coach Norvell talked about Jalen feeling more comfortable with second start. Last week was kind of thrown out at the last minute. Mm -hmm. um, but it seemed like across the board there was more physicality. Did you, is that accurate, or did they just operate better? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's five of them out there, so a lot of times that group gets defined as a group, which they should because of the O-line. Um, but I thought we had some guys that played physical and some guys that, you know, need to, you know, get better in physicality. I thought having, you know, what happened with Jalen was a prime example of you never know when your opportunity comes. You know, opportunity never, Coach Tito always tells me, you know, Coach, opportunity doesn't come and give you an introduction like, hey, I'm opportunity, I'm here to, 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 to give you what you're looking for. It just kind of comes out of nowhere. So what you've done to prepare in that moment is on the show. So I think as a young guy that hadn't repped too much, it was too tail of two weeks of, and warm ups, not knowing you're going to go to after warm ups, but now you had a week to prepare because you knew you were going to go. And um, that does a that does wonders for those young O linemen, especially in understanding how important their role is. The young O linemen just want to play, and then once they play, they, they realize that comes with a, a heavy responsibility, not only just the results of the game, but the health of the people behind them. Um, so I think he took that serious, you know, and, and it's a preparation series, so he saw the results. So hopefully he continues to do that. But he's on that track. He's right at where his body and how he plays should be able to go out there and, um, and perform. You know, I learned some hard lessons in playing young alignment early, too early, and I had some body beat up, you know, some surgeries, some things of that nature, but he was able to develop his body and go out there and showcase himself, which we're going to keep going. Brennan? What are the things through the four games you've seen from DJ that you can build on for positive or things that Get better at yeah, you just to stop stressing. You know what I mean? I, I think sometimes he takes it. He's been through it, but he also, you know, he takes full ownership and responsibility. And and sometimes you, you try to force those big plays and force those moments. I thought we did a good job conversing third downs, which was which was positive. Another positive step forward. But just just take what they give you, and also understand that, that you know everything has a reason and a setup for something else. But you don't have to force the uh, the issue, just kind of let it come to you and let the defense, you know, you know, let us dictate what we want to do. So I think he's finding more comfortability. You know, our job is to keep him inspired and keep him positive. I think he's finding more comfort level with that, but also the understanding that, man, it, it'll, it'll come. You know, you know, it'll come. So I saw that settle down with the play he made for Jakai. We missed a couple opportunities in there to kind of open that thing up, but, you know, you, you just got to let it come to you and not just try to, you know, force that thing. Ira. Obviously, the total points are what you're looking for, um, but there were a lot of positives. It looked like from play to play. How much does it, in terms of watching the film with those guys, the whole offense, just mm -hmm. seeing successful plays, um, coming after a win, just like in terms of just the mindset as they go on to another week. Yeah, the difficulty on offense is, is that you know sometimes it's not repetitive. You know what I mean? Where you say like everything goes in general broad deals. All it's blocking, but it could just be this individual that's blocking that has done it before and showcased it, but didn't do it on that play. Or it drops, like, oh man, there's been different people, you know, at different times who's actually made some big plays at certain other times. Or it could be, hey, they're not, you know, the throw this, whatever. It's multiple things in a broad view. Our job is to inspire, to show that they can because they've done it before, but also try to avoid the, the, the big mistakes, you know, like the, all right, we can't have that and make sure we got the right personnel out there. But, Overall, I've been seeing a positive strides of us not only preparing them to what they can do in the game plan and preparation, 
but also them having the confidence to go out there and do it. When I look out there on the field, there's a lot of guys that didn't, that they didn't have the responsibility of wins and losses on them ever before in their career. Like there's a lot of guys out there that played on good football teams that they never had to bear their responsibility. Like, oh, I'm gonna just put this in the middle. So now I think they're selling down. Like, no, you have to. This has to be done. It's not like you know, there's nobody coming behind you to save you. You know what I mean? So now I think that responsibility and ownership is showing up in preparation, which is growing the offense. Sure. Coach Norvell mentioned earlier that you guys need out without Roy Jones for a certain period of time. What challenges is that going to the offense, but also how excited are you to see the young guys and maybe the same opportunity? Yeah, Rodell was a it was a tough one. You know, I, I was interested to see as the season progressed how he would grow and, and the understanding of what we're trying to do. But you know, he, when he does come back, I think sometimes you know that, that, that adversity comes, gives you a little bit of humility and understanding, and then sometimes watching practice from outside in. You kind of get a little bit more sometimes. Sometimes it's a blessing in disguise. But I mean, I, I love how you know LT stepped up big for us and, and taking the load. I think he picked the most carries of, in the back this season. And um, Cam showing he can come go in there and showcase his abilities well. And I can't wait to get him some more because I think when we get to see his speed and power on display consistently, it, it's going to help the offense. And um, we still got like like Sam got in there, you know, mixed it up a little bit. You know, and, and, because I was always ready to go. So I think that room overall, those young guys growing up and finding that comfort level of not just wanting to play, but actually playing responsible and taking the preparation to it is going to be big for us. Uh, some of the young guys are starting to you know, take advantage of opportunities. Jalen Brown seems like he's stepping mm -hmm. up. And you guys have a lot of young skill guys that are super talented. Like how, how do you guys, I guess, handle the urge to want to get them on the field because they look like they can maybe make some big plays. Also balancing, you know, maybe they don't know everything they need to do. Really. How challenging is that? I mean, I want every skilled player in there to fall and play. I mean, that's, that's the, I want them to say I want to play. So I want them to press and, and really show, but also now that they have the desire, I have to teach them the process of how. Um, this is how preparation works. This is how you got to take care of your body. This is how you got to show responsibility even outside the field. It doesn't just start there. It starts in how are you when the list come out, the academic list, are you at point, are you take care of like all the other stuff to show that you're ready for that responsibility to go out there and have that. And Jalen Brown is another guy I mentioned that I might not have had games where I want to play, but I haven't had to make a third down contested catch, but the move change in a big game. These are all learning things for him as well too. So I, I love the progression. We come out here on Sunday nights and all those guys, that's like that's like game two for us because all the guys don't play 20% of the game. They go out there and we practice. And we run a big script and we get to kind of go out there and coach those guys like that's their game on Sunday. And all those guys have been showing up in situations that they know, but just being able to react to the flash of the game that we might not have showed them or prepared for, they got to start having that understanding of what that is for their trust. And I do believe you will see more of those guys as we're pushing forward because I'm starting to see those eyes change and those pushing in those practices. So. And even look on the sideline for me, being on the sideline for the first time, seeing those guys over and listening to them when things are happening and coaching each other, you know, it gives you a little bit more trust with those guys as they're going forward. And they understand exactly what they got to do. You can't just go out there and say, hey, you're going to play when you're ready. No, man, coach, what do you need to see? We tell them what we need to see. If they showcase that, then they're going to play. Sure. Coach, Cal was the third game in a row. You guys did not pick up a first down and open possession and come to the end of the offense. You know, what do you guys need to do to get better about this game? Yeah, I think it just comes down to overall execution. You know, that's, that's a coach term, but that's just reality. You know, because when we come back and we discuss it with the player, they say, oh, man, we saw it, this, that. You know what I mean? So I thought the uh, the second play kind of put us in a little bit of jam because we, you know, the tight end flat there deal with the end read. Got into a little danger there. But other than that, I think that, you know, that's the main thing of it is making sure that our opening scripts match the things that they're comfortable with and we can kind of give them a little bit of success of what we've seen from defense, but the defense coordinators, they know too, so they understand how to change the look up and we gotta be able to react when it's not exactly what we thought it was. And that goes from us making sure we give them no reaction to the things that can show up, but also the player's reaction in real time. Corey? The, uh, the hold that was called on, uh, uh, on Ferguson, mm -hmm. um, my uneducated eye, I know he threw him to the ground, but it yeah. kind of looked like he just blocked him to the ground. What what did he do? What What's the teaching moment there to tell him not to do better? And then also with, with Jalen Early, 
think there was a play where he, he had a really nice block and kind of did a little bit of a flex. Like he, he felt himself a little bit in a good way. Is that something you like to see out of an offensive lineman to have that kind of uh, personality or belief in himself to be fired up after a block like that? That's a part of it. The first thing is Curtis was always in terms of stop his feet on contact. Um, you know, I thought he had a good block on the guy and he was trying to be aggressive with his upper body. But anytime you stop your feet during post contact, there's always a chance you can get a hold with any upper body in front of you. Because it doesn't matter if it was a hold, if it presents what looks like a hold or a cold. So the easiest way thing is always try to keep your head tight, keep your feet post contact, active as possible, then you kind of avoid some of those things. So that was a correction for him. For Jalen, I think it's more self belief that you can. We all, you know, all of us are pretty high in our profession, but at one point, you know, you got that, that moment of like, I can do this, like, you know, and, and, and it builds that self-confidence. So I like to see him out there going and celebrating when he can and still keep his mind in the game, but it's like, I can do this, you know what I mean? And now that builds from there. So, I mean, that was awesome to see a young guy go out there and, you know, now he's earned his rep, kind of, kind of going here and start the competition going, which always elevates everybody when you have that, especially at that position. And also, Jalen is like, a, you know, watching him practice, he, he ain't the biggest guy, but man, he, you go out and practice, he's been blocking for a while. He's a good player, so I'm excited to see him excel and, and keep continuing doing. He's also multiple. He's played, you know, guard and tackle for us. So I'm excited to see his growth and how much he keeps going for us because he sure needs it. Right. And not your position or even your side of the ball, mm -hmm. um, but it's one team. But what can what the defensive line did in this past game and, and the way they've started to play the last couple of weeks, Josh and Peyton and those guys. What can that maybe do for the offense and the, the whole team overall? I think it goes back to the, the statement I said about guys who played a lot of football, but the ownership of, I have to make that play. There, there's nobody else coming. I can't wear my responsibility because every part of the game is not the same. There's critical part, parts of the game, there's situations of third down, last drive, like, and, and your, your, your light bulb kind of goes on like, oh, I'm the one that got to do this. This is, this is me. And we got a lot of guys, good players and talented, I don't know how many times they've been in those kind of situations. So as those situations are coming up in the game, you start to see improvement from that. Whether the offense, defense, special teams, uh, uh, oh, it's me. I'm, 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 I'm going to go win the game. I'm going to go make the stop. I'm going to go make the catch. I'm going to make the block. So it becomes that personal accountability and ownership of, okay, now I understand that role of not just playing a, a personal game and things of that nature to, you know, I'm responsible for the outcome of the game. And, and you watch those guys' preparation and, and how they prepare and said, okay, it's not just practice. When we practice third down, okay, this is on me. You know what I mean? I was talking to Jordan on the sideline, and I remember, you know, when he was here, he talked about that moment in NC State when we lost. We learned more that game than anything because he said, oh, I had to make the play. You know, he couldn't be he doing it. He was like, oh, I got it. Then from now he made a, a tremendous run of just understanding. And then if you go back to those interviews, Coach talked about how he started to prepare and what changed, what clicked for him to understand like, oh, I gotta get a point or, or this can be detrimental. So I think as our guys preparation is starting to go to that of the ownership, we're starting to see that, that, that progression that we need to see throughout the process. Anything else for Al? As one. Four games now with you guys, four games DJ as a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Is he figuring out things that you guys want out of him or is it more important now for you guys four games? to learn what he's comfortable doing and, and cater things around that and I guess teach and coach him up in a way that he feels more comfortable with him. Right, that balance of what we're comfortable with versus what the defense presents that we can take advantage of. Um, and our, our job is to, you know, they got they got class things that going on. We're up there all day, every day. So we, we know we can kind of see what the defense is going to present to us. Then we have to find that formula that they've done to kind of still fit what we can utilize against the defense. So we got to find that balance. We, we have to make sure we're doing a better job of that. Because, you know, as coaches, something we get excited. And maybe they hadn't done that before, you know what I mean? And things of that nature. So yes, we have to make sure we're comfortable in showing the strength of what we do, not to always be reaction, but to dictate the things we do well and make them stop the things we do well, but also be able to react differently when they're presenting something that we haven't done, but we can take advantage of. So there is a fine balance of that. We gotta make sure we're, we're finding it pretty quickly. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks.